Once again, if you guys want to see me create and give tips and tricks live, you can visit me on my Twitch channel, where we hang out almost daily. Have you ever wondered how creators like JF or Darwin keep sending out levels at the speed of light? As if they were on cocaine or something. Like seriously, it feels like every other week they have a new 1 minute level up on the service. And to this day, it blows my mind how fast they actually are. It seems their brains are just filled with ideas and themes, and their incredible knowledge of the editor allows them to quickly execute those ideas. Today we're going to talk about this knowledge, and how you can become just as good at using the editor with some small hidden features you probably didn't even know existed. Just like my will to go outside, everything I list in this video is based off the fact that half of the people in my Twitch chat seemingly never know that these things even exist when I use them while building. So let's get into the third episode, the hidden features of the Geometry Dash editor. Let's start where you start, by opening up the game. Immediately we are greeted with the classic main menu theme. <sighs> It never gets old. Head on over to the main menu. The first one that you're gonna find over here is called Increase, Undo and Redo. This one basically does what it's named after. It increases the amount of times we can mess up and undo the undescribable and horrible atrocities that we have committed. Like these war crimes. I believe it increases the amount of undos and redos from 50 to 100. But if I'm wrong, you're allowed to bonk me in my Discord server. I think it goes without saying why this is a really helpful option to check. Last thing you want is to make a mistake you can't undo. I think that's every creator's worst fear. The next thing that I want you to check is move optimizations. It's hard to say what exactly this one does. All I know is that if you're having trouble with moving objects lagging your game, you might want to check this one. These are basically the only two things worth mentioning. I think every other option that has to do with the editor is either ticked by default or just not important at all. But yeah, on to the more important stuff. We are now in the editor. You probably have used this button right here tons of times and you probably know what most of the things in here do. But if you look at the bottom down here, we have four buttons that I keep getting questions about what exactly their purpose is. Fear no more, Captain Exploded Coke Cans over here is coming to your rescue. What the, f the high detail button. This button is a tool to mark objects that could cause lag on some players' devices. It is always smart to add a low detail mode to your level so that as many people as possible can enjoy it. If a player notices lag or struggles to play the level because of lag, all he has to do is activate this small button down here to turn off every single object the creator has flagged as a high detail object. The group parent. This one is a biggie. 90% of the time in the editor is spent placing and moving things in the correct way. And although there's a grid to help you, sometimes you want to place things off grid, but still keep symmetry, or test out how rotating objects could rotate without playtesting the movement. The group parent helps you with that. Select an object and give it group parent. This object will now be treated as the ultimate center of any rotations you try to apply to it. No matter where other objects are, the center objects, or aka group parent, will always be the center of the rotation. Note that this will only work with one group parent per selection. If there are more, the game just makes a relative center point again. It's basically just as useful as align X and align Y, but we're gonna get to these later. Don't fade and don't enter. These two buttons have to do with the fact that objects usually don't just slide into your screen, like I slide into Aliens DMs every day. Jam. They fade in by default. You can change how they fade in with these triggers here. But for people like me that don't like these fades and think they're just ruining the details in a way when they fade in and it just makes structures look meh, you can activate don't fade or don't enter to stop this fading from even happening. Editor layer 2. Everyone knows how layering in the game works. Give it a layer number and that object will only appear in that layer. However, did you know that you can put objects on two layers at once? That's what the editor layer 2 is used for. That's basically all the buttons in here that I really wanted to talk about. I know that layering in this game can be really, really confusing, so if you guys want me to make a full video explaining how the layering system works, tell me. Let's get to the next section. The editor pause menu. Although all of these buttons are in your face every time you enter or exit or playtest your level, do you really know what all of these buttons do? Me and my two brain cells don't, so let's find out. 
The first one is show object info. This one is like a magic fortune teller wizard thing that tells you exactly which colors the thing you selected has, which groups the selected objects are linked to, what layers they are situated on, what sea order they have, how many objects you have selected, their favorite food, dating preferences, that one embarrassing thing they did in high school, the select filter. This is probably the most hidden and obscure thing I'm going to be showing off, but it's super useful. Trust me. When you take select filter, it basically makes these three buttons finally get a job, find a wife and start their family. It enables these three buttons. Just like the name suggests, if you click the static button, for example, you will now only be able to delete static objects. Static objects are all objects in the game that interact with the player. Same with the detail button, but for objects that don't interact with the player. The most useful one though is the custom button. It allows you to select an object and make that selected object the filter. You will now only be able to select this object or linked objects that contain this object. Which brings me to the next important feature you should know exists. Linked object controls. If the geometry dash editor was a cake, linked objects would be the cherry on top. Press pause in the editor, come to the small gear button and enable linked object controls. This will make these two handsome buttons appear next to the zoom button. Basically, it does exactly what it's named after. It links multiple objects together, so selecting them treats them as if they were one object. In very messy levels, this feature is a lifesaver and can save you hours of frustratingly selecting thousands of objects before you can actually move that one structure. The follow player button. Ever wanted to playtest a movement, but the awful camera controls of the editor playtest give you a seizure? Turn follow player off, so you can look at your smexy movements and colors without feeling like you are in a magnitude 10 earthquake. Align X and Align Y. These two buttons I've already talked about and shown what they do in my first ever Know Your Editor video. I'll let old Sammy explain this. Here's what they do. So imagine you have this structure and you want to find out the center of that structure and mark it with a dot. So you can use symmetry and other different techniques to make sure that it looks visually pleasing. So all you have to do is select both outlines of the center, basically the most right and the most left thing that you can find on your structure. You then also select the middle point that you want to mark the middle point with. And so now you have three objects. You come into the pause menu and you press align X. Now this will align the object in the middle at the perfect center on the X axis. The X axis is left to right horizontal. And there you go, you have the center of the structure now. You can now use other doodles or just whatever you can think of. You will always know that that is the center of your structure. That is a really good tool and a very good example of knowing the editor to its fullest extent. Select all. This is basically control plus A for your geometry dash editor. It will select everything you built. However, it limits itself to the layer that you have selected. If you want to select everything on layer zero, for example, go to that layer and hit that fat button. You're good to go. Select all left and right does the same thing, but it will only select everything to the right or the left of the editor preview line you can see here. The build helper. This one, just like linked controls, can be a real lifesaver. If there's one button that I want you to know what it does, it's this one. There's a reason it's called Build Helper. Basically, what this button does is it checks the groups of the objects you have selected and automatically replaces them with free unused ones. But it also makes sure that if you select triggers with it, it automatically sets the triggers right for you too. This one is a bit confusing, so bear with me. Here we have a rotating gear. It looks pretty, it's pretty badass, and we like it. Now imagine we want a second one of these, somewhere else in the level. Simply copying isn't gonna work out without splitting time and space or something. But if you select the copied rotating gear with its triggers, press pause and click on this big, beefy, handsome button, you will see that every single object and trigger automatically got set to the new free groups that weren't used before. If you didn't know this existed, you probably feel like me when I found out recently what Align X and Align Y does. It's obvious why this is such a helpful tool. And now you can add it to your toolbox to be better, faster. Uncheck portals. Some of you may not know, but gameplay portals and speed portals have this check mark that you can click on. Depending on which portal, it shows you the borders of how far the player will be able to see when you enter this portal in game. This is a helpful tool to help you organize your level and it perfectly shows you how far you have to build before you reach the no man's land. The uncheck portals button basically deselects all portals in the editor and turns off these lines that can stack up over time and just be visually annoying and in the way.
This basically covers everything really important on this pause menu. I know there are a bunch of others, but they really aren't that useful or they are self-explanatory, so I decided to skip them. However, just like me in real life, we have one more button lurking in the unknown up here. This will lead you to the second pause menu? Why does Rob add five new menus every update? What's next? A menu for menu? The hidden pause menu. I basically call this the quality of life menu, and you'll probably understand why soon. Duration lights. Ever needed a visual representation of how long Mal needs to get to his lasagna with a move trigger? This is the button that's gonna help you. Every trigger that has a duration now has a duration line showing exactly how long the effect of this trigger will last based on the position of the player. Oh, this is making me Hide UI on test. This one basically hides all the menus and buttons that could obstruct your view of your beautiful masterpiece while playtesting in the editor. Effect lines. Effect lines are turned on by default. But I'm here to show you, you can actually turn them off to avoid whatever the fuck this is. Like seriously Spartanix, what the f- The button rows. With this one you can basically choose how many rows of objects or how many objects you want in one row to appear in your editor. This is very useful when you want to speed up building and you hate clicking on that stupid arrow that has like 10 different pages and you always forget which page this one object is on and it's just one huge mess and I hate it and it's- So at least it helps with that. I hope all of you have learned at least one thing or learned about one feature that you didn't know before you clicked on this video. My goal of this is to make the start into creating a bit easier for newer creators by giving them the knowledge and skill that I wish I would have had all those years ago. I'm not kidding when I say I've only learned about some of these features recently and they have been an absolute lifesaver ever since. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Thank you all so much for all the support recently. You guys are absolutely blowing everything out of the water straight up. I hope to see all of you in my Twitch streams where I'm building live, giving tips and tricks on how to get better at creating. And yeah, I hope all of you have an absolutely amazing day. Keep your world shining. Take care.